I don't know. Fly casual. All right, well, hello. Welcome back uh, to the Sloppy Modeler. Welcome back to 2020, or welcome to 2020, I should say. Happy New Year. Uh, this is the first video I've recorded of the year, and uh, happy to be back in the saddle, so to speak, and uh, making some progress, working on a few things as far as uh, the... Um, uh, working on a few things as far as camera angles and uh, camera setup, so hopefully this will make an improvement over where we were at at the end of last year and uh, trying to improve the channel, improve uh, what we're able to do from uh, from a different perspective and so forth. One of the things I've done is developed a, a better close-up system, a better camera, uh, essentially that can definitely pull in a close-up uh, that we have not had before, so I'm kind of excited about that. Just have to learn to work with that a little better here and there, but uh, for the most part we're really excited about the detail level that you can get now with this, this new camera. Very excited about that. Uh, I've been working on the uh, Rogue One series, and in the Rogue One series in the Bandai kit, you get uh, two of the battle tanks. I've uh, painted those a, a light sea gray and then painted a darker gray with an orange on top of it. So you can see here, kind of definitely put that uh, cargo uh, post together. I uh, went back and watched Rogue One. What a fantastic movie! You know, between uh, the end of uh, the, the last of the first trilogy and uh, for New Hope between movies three and four, uh, you had Rogue One. And Rogue One is absolutely a, a, just a perfect fit, in my opinion. I think they just did an awesome job with it. I loved it. I loved uh, the storyline, uh, the data being retrieved, uh, you know, all of that uh, with Jen Orso. I, I, I just enjoyed it. So I went ahead and got that kit, and within that kit, like I said, you've got the U-wing fighter, the uh, joint or the, the tie striker, and then the two battle tanks. The battle tanks have been painted, as I said. I painted the, the panels here on the uh, tie striker. I'm not going to paint. Might do a little bit of detailing, but I'm not going to do an overall paint on this. I'm going to do the colors right out of Bandai as they're shown here. I think that that's going to be just fine in that regard. I'm, I'm going to use the decals, which are here, rather than the stickers. Once I decal that up, I think that'll look really nice. I think uh, these decals are absolutely fantastic. You can see that they've got good registry on them. Uh, they've just uh, really turned out nice. And they're both decals here for the TIE Striker and, uh, again, for the joint, uh, or for the, the U-Wing. And then this is a really nice set of canopy lines to go over that. You can get that to go on just right. I think that's going to look really nice over the top of that with... Uh, uh, out having to put a plastic cover over the top of it. You could substitute in this cover here. Uh, you could substitute in this cover here for the canopy, but I don't like the look of that. I'm, I'm going to do that with decals. Got some guns to put on that, some detail painting to do on those, but the base has been painted. Uh, and uh, this is ready for uh, some more decals, a little more de uh, detail painting, and then a couple of the little red lasers that go with that. And I think those res red lasers are right there. Uh, that's what they look like. Uh, um, and I'm going to put them in because you may as well. They look pretty nice. And uh, that sprue will be completed and finished. And then it's just a matter of putting in the rest of the bases. That little base there is going to go on to my Superstar Destroyer. And that is being epoxied right now in uh, some of the... Um, 
edges and as soon as that uh, is dry we'll get that painted up and uh, this has in here there are 13 lights uh, unfortunately uh, 11 of them only 11 of them work so we'll get to that in a bit as soon as I power that up but this was an experiment in how small that lighting can get and I found it wasn't the LED lights themselves that caused the issue it was the resistors in there trying to fit seven resistors in here because I used two per light um, which was enough voltage uh, and enough resistance that they didn't burn out because they're little little tiny 0402 SMDs orange uh, in order to do that they're really tiny and fitting all those resistors and the shrink wrap and the wiring in there and, and getting it to come together was a significant uh, hurdle but I, I did manage to get that done so you know definitely seeing uh, uh, definitely seeing some progress there this was uh, I didn't work on this at all over the holidays I had an awesome set of holidays uh, between Christmas and New Year and now getting back uh, at full full tilt at work uh, we're back at it and I do have time for some modeling now this uh, during the winter months here uh, and then uh, we'll be back at it. So, for right now, this is the update for uh, the Sloppy Modeler for update uh, the first half of uh, the Rogue One build series. And we'll come back to you with more progress. And I am going to try to show more work uh, videos this time out. I got a request to do that rather than just talk about what I did, go and do it, and then come back and, and then talk about it. So I'm going to try to do more of that as we're going through it. So for right now, that's where we're at. Uh, thank you, and we'll be back in uh, more up. This was an experiment in how small that lighting can get, and I found it wasn't the LED lights themselves that caused the issue, it was the resistors in there. Trying to fit seven resistors in here, because I used two per light, uh, which was enough voltage uh, and enough resistance that they didn't burn out, because they're little, little tiny 0402 SMDs orange. Uh, in order to do that, they're really tiny and fitting all those resistors and the shrink wrap and the wiring in there and, and getting it to come together was a significant uh, hurdle, but I, I did manage to get that done. So, you know, definitely seeing, uh, uh, definitely seeing some progress there. This was, uh, I didn't work on this at all over the holidays. I had an awesome set of holidays uh, between Christmas and New Year and now getting back uh, at full, full tilt at work. Uh, we're back at it. And I do have time for some modeling now this uh, during the winter months here, uh, and then uh, we'll be back at it. So, for right now, this is the update for uh, the Sloppy Modeler, for update uh, the first half of uh, the Rogue One build series, and we'll come back to you with more progress. And I am gonna try to show more work uh, videos this time out. I got a request to do that rather than just talk about what I did, go and do it and then come back and, and then talk about it. So I'm gonna to try to do more of that as we're going through it. So for right now, that's where we're at. Uh, thank you and we'll be back in uh, more update number one of the Rogue One. All right, hey, uh, welcome back to the Sloppy Modeler. Uh, wanted to show you real quick. Um, I'm about to do the decals on this, but that cover is uh, like a gunmetal gray and it uh, doesn't look like a window or a, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a cockpit at all with that, that piece on there. The decal is this black piece. So what I'm gonna do is paint this uh, chrome silver and then after that's dry, lay that, lay that uh, decal right there uh, over the top of it. And I think that's gonna look pretty nice. Uh, the other thing is, um, I'm not painting the rest of this, uh, but I am going to put a clear coat on it uh, of, a of a dull coat, and that'll take some of this gloss off, and it should uh, look pretty decent once that's done. And then, uh, so uh, I'll paint this, uh, the aluminum color or, or chrome silver, uh, then put the rest of the decals on it, and then uh, do a, uh, a dull coat. So hopefully that will, will get us there. Um, so right now, definitely working on putting together uh, the, these are the stickers. I don't want to use those. I want to use these. Bandai has put together its um, uh, kit. So the combat tank is pretty well done. I've got those two done. And then there's just uh, 27, 29, 28 here in the front. 
a uh, couple in the back, 30 in the back, and then 17, 18 on the, the, the top. So I'm going to go ahead and 26 looks like right here. But what I'm going to start with is probably the, the um, uh, U-Wing fighter, and uh, we'll put that together here. We'll start getting some of these decals put on it, and uh, hopefully that will brighten that up a little bit. And then I'll weather, weather this. And again, this has no paint on it. It's just going to do decals right over the plastic. And once that's done, we're in good shape there. Um, just about have the uh, Superstar Destroyer ready for primer. I uh, This has been an absolute uh, terrible nightmare. So uh, basically I'm going to put some great paint, uh, sand this up a little more, put some great paint on it, and then uh, call it good. So we're, we're making progress on that. Not much, but a little bit uh, here and there. So for right now, I basically want to just get a coat of paint onto uh, that uh, front of this uh, tie striker, onto that part. And so, uh, in essence, basically just uh, using the chrome silver here to get that done. And now I got to go into the glasses because that's going to be uh, a little bit more challenging. So, essentially, it's just uh, watch your eyes. Silver is in, you're in. And I'm not worried about going over the divider between windows because that's what that um, that's what that uh, glass is gonna do or that, that decal should do for me right there. So in essence just gonna go right around it, fill it in, and I know it's not clear glass, but silver is at least an approximation of it, at least reflective. And so, you know, if I can get that done, I can get that done. And okay, good enough. And then this is just uh, water soluble. And now I do have, when I do my decaling, uh, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, here's my, um, here's my uh, Microsol micro set and the brushes I like using for that. So those are pretty nice. Here's my silver paint. And then, um, I do have a super fine blade here that I like for it, and I'll use that one. So I don't get lost, we're going to start from the front to the back. And the first ones here are number six, which I think is probably right there. kind of a quick process here and then I really like uh, let's see if I can find them here oh, right here I really like these reverse tweezers um, because you can just let them hold put them in like that let it sit so that's number six and then this will be number nine right here And that'll be next. So what that does is that goes across the front tip and down the side right there. So I've never uh, used Bandai before, so we'll have to see if they take uh, need longer to soak. I do like uh, a lot of the polar lights seem to work pretty good. But we'll see how that will come loose or not <clears throat> off of its backing paper. Okay, uh, and then uh, 
uh, just a real simple couple of brushes. Essentially what I do is just a little water right there, give it a chance to slide. surface tension spots but now it's moving pretty good and I like that so it's just that simple and then, so these water slide decals from uh, Bandai. Uh, that was nice. That went on really nice. We'll have to see how this comes together. Yeah, not bad. And part number three is right there. The next one. So I'm waiting for that to soak through the backing paper and I move on to the next one. If I get too far ahead though, I can't remember the numbers of which ones were which. So I'm pretty careful about just doing a one or two ahead at the most. And uh, that seems to help me keep at least a little bit organized. And I'm careful about putting it into the water right away because I've done that before. And the next thing you know, I've let it sit there too long and it actually floats loose uh, away from the backing paper. Okay, so we're moving. And just a little more fresh water there. Definitely my fault, not the decal's fault. Get that excess water out. And that's why I like these white bristle brushes because they tend to uh, wick that water away pretty easily. And then once that's done, um, I find that it, stuff seems to work pretty good as far as sliding around and and uh, lining back up. Good. So it looks like maybe 20 seconds or so in the water allows us to um, break that loose from the backing. Let that sit. And then my next decal looks like uh, number 14, which is right there.
Let the first sound you hear be a beating heart. It's beating bright, it's beating bold. Mm. When your eyes come to me, I'm humbled constantly. A supernova in sight. And that goes from about right here to about right there. And so um, the challenge on something like this is that there's no actual demarcation in the panel line. So for me, it's just going to be eyeballing it to see, you know, it's about the middle of that indentation right there to the middle of that indentation right there. And then, once again, put my scraps over there. And I need the other, number 14. And just a quick view here. Here is the... Battle tank completed. The guns have been painted. I didn't glue them in, but they seem to be in them pretty good. We've got our stormtrooper. We've got uh, the hatch a different color, and then I did use a quick panel wash to bring out some of those colors. So pretty pleased with that. Uh, these again, this scale at 144 is so tiny, but uh, I'm pleased with the way that both of those turned out. saw will will come into play but what I like to do is just let them dry here first um, so there's a couple of different bumps here Let's see if I can show this in the camera there's a bump that's right there and then there's a recession recessed area right there so it definitely makes it look a little wobbled and warbled I guess but um, I'm gonna let that dry just as it is I'll do the other side here, and um, then I'll probably, let's see, is there any more on top? Yeah, a few more, so we'll work on the top some more, and then once the top is done, uh, then, um, once the top is done, then uh, we'll let it all dry. We'll, we'll take, uh, take a little break from it. So, that is my process for decaling, and uh, we will uh, do one more here and then we'll uh, take a break and be back with you. So I do like the fact that these Bandai decals in only 15-20 seconds in the water seems to work and it's pretty mild water. It's not cold or it's not uh, warm. Kind of between warm and, and cold actually. And Let 
let that sit for a minute or so. And it looks like the next decal is going to be number 19. Which is just a tiny little red stripe. Those are smaller than the Star Trek red stripes. So. But it's not long like some of those are, fortunately. So trying to match this with the other side, there is this indentation right where my line is and I've lined up the blue with that side and I've done the same thing on this side. So that should make them even. stripe is going to be pretty fast, if you ask me. And it looks like there's a red pinstriping around the uh, engine drive component, whatever that is, on the back there, uh, because we've got, got a few to go on that, that piece of it, and some little tiny ones. So. Now sometimes when they're that small, you know, they'll pop off pretty quick just because there's not a lot of material, a lot of backing there. Sometimes they don't, but this one goes right along that front line. There looks like a couple of panel lines that are allowing that to line up. Pull the water out from underneath it. Good. All right, I will be back with you shortly. <laughs> okay, so we are continuing with the Rogue One set and uh, just trying to finish up the details and decals, I should say, on the U-wing uh, fighter. I do have the decals done, uh, except for this one here, and I think I'll actually do that one next so that this will be done. And I can go um, coat that with a, a coat of uh, dull coat and take that shine off of it and then I can call that good. So I'm going to do that and then we'll continue working on uh, the U-Wing and next is probably the engines. But right now let's go ahead and do this one here and uh, now right now my water is in my lower level. It's uh, pretty chilly outside here on uh, the uh, 18th of the 19th of, of uh, January in uh, West Michigan, and we had a bit of a snowstorm come through, but nothing terrible. A few inches, but it is blowing pretty good right now, and the temperatures are low. And against this lower level, uh, the water is definitely cold. And actually, probably after I do this one, I'm going to go fill that up with warm water and because uh, it definitely slides better on warm water and definitely makes it uh, easier for them to come off uh, of the, uh, the, the backing on these uh, water slide decals. So as you remember, I did paint that silver and uh, you can see that that uh, silver is done there uh, for, the, 
face of the cockpit and uh, once this is on this should blacken it up and give it a little depth uh, depth of field if you will I do need to put um, my micro crystal clear I'm sorry no I need to put my uh, micro sol onto the top of the Ewing but I'll do that after I get the bottom done and then go back through and do um, go back through and do the, the top of the microsol but for the most part everything has pretty well sat down um, you know so I'm, I'm kind of excited with the way that looks cockpit turned out nice and these actually settled down in pretty well here uh, and then the, the surrounding on that so I, I'm doing all right with the U-wing uh, and let's uh, see if this will slide off now I don't know maybe there we go so it is moving a little bit Try to line this up with the ridges that are on the. And again, I like. Oh, hey, I like that. Um, I like using these uh, white bristle brushes. It seems to help take the water out from underneath the decal when I'm using it. This seems to be laying down pretty nice, so I think what I just have to do is get this lined up with the ridges. And in this case, I'm going to put just a little bit of, of micro-set onto it. Soften that up a little bit. It doesn't need a lot, but it does need some just to hit those different areas. Again, one more time with the knife here. And I like that. I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, I think that that looks uh, decent enough that I'm just going to let it sit now and let it uh, dry. So that is the uh, tie striker, pretty well done. And now moving ahead to uh, the decals on the bottom of that. So the first one here, of course, is going to be uh, decal uh, number 12, right there. And these decals are really tiny. Of course, this is a tiny scale kit, but I think we're coming to an area pretty fast. That's just about done with them. First I was confused. Bandai put these lines in here and you hardly ever see that but basically that was telling me that both of those are number 14, both of that's number 13. Um, it was just telling me where those are but at first I thought well is that a decal? It's like nope it's just a, a line of demarcation telling me where that, that one goes. This cold water seems to be doing alright by letting it sit a little bit so I'm not going to get too finicky with it. I think that that one's done. And uh, looking at the directions, it looks like the two red lasers are going to come off of the front of that, actually not off of the tie striker like I originally thought and I think that'll finish that out nicely although these guns do look pretty nice on here as it, uh, as it came out of the Bandai kit and we'll let that sit for just a couple of seconds and while that's sitting we'll go grab the next one and I see that there's some yellow decals that will go on at some point. Add a little more color. And then the stretch that goes, uh, or the set that goes around the engines, uh, is uh, probably coming up next after this. I just pulled those off and set them there so that we could get to them. And these are kind of around, I think, go around the, the bottom there. So if this is 
loose. Grab a little water, stretch it along that wing. I'm glad I let those ones on the top. It's been a couple of days since I set those and I'm glad that I've not touched them because as a sloppy modeler, what I would do would I would get those done, flip them over too soon before they were dry or set and then pull them over and as I'm handling them all of a sudden of course uh, you've lost your decal that you worked so hard to place and put it in place uh, on the top just so and then uh, you've, you've blown it. So. Um, in that regard, I'm glad that those are dry on the top and, and done. Uh, and like I said, that, uh, that turned out pretty good. There's a little bit of a challenge, but uh, uh, with this stuff this tiny, it really works against me with my big meat paws here. So um, let's see what we've got. And the next one here. And we'll let that sit a minute. And then we'll look at uh, these here, it looks like. Number 24. Sometimes when they're like this, so this is showing me that this is going to go right. Oh boy, can't tell where that gets placed. Maybe put the glasses on here. So what this is showing me is that this goes across. Um, looks like it drops down right there, and that's where I'm gonna put that. So that one looks this hooks back this way and that one looks back that way. So we'll come back to that in a second. But right now let's see if we can break this loose away from the backing. Since this doesn't have any paint on it at all, I'm um, not worried about putting a gloss coat down on it first, and then also not worried about um, it uh, getting silver underneath it because there's just there's just nothing underneath there, so it should go right on that plastic. And what I've found, if I can't get it to slide. Just kind of saturate with water a little bit, and suddenly it should break loose, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Again, I have found that this white brush does indeed wick um, water away better than the other ones do. I don't know if it absorbs better or what the issue is. Now when it comes time for these little ones like this, sometimes I'll just do two, two up where you can soak them both and you can get them on in time. And uh, that shouldn't be too difficult, hopefully. I'll add a little water to the side here. And like I said, this is, uh, it would have been fun to paint this on a larger scale, like maybe a 170 second scale. And I think there is a kit for that. I don't have it, but maybe a larger scale to do this. And then um, that would allow me to uh, just allow a little nicer finish all, all around it. Uh, but this plastic will suffice. And then I might just uh, figure out how to, might figure out how to um, gloss coat it 
or I should say dull coated or satin coated just to give it a little bit of a different finish there. And uh, let's see, okay, so I want to. I've always noticed that before uh, these decals will slide, the numbers literally disintegrate uh, if you leave them on there. A little weird. I'm not sure why that happens that way. I don't know if they're. I don't think they're different print. Maybe it's just because they're so delicate and tiny um, that it's that's just simply the way that they they work. But uh, rather than getting the down on here. So rather than getting those, um, oh, that's nice. I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna put that right underneath that hook there to the back, and then run it just up over the corner, just a touch. And I think this is the case where a little bit of Microsoft again will look and get, help that to set up over the over the ridge. But I like the way that sits. There's a, a little angle. That's right there, and that hooks to it. So we'll do that side, and then we'll lay in the other side here. We'll be back with you shortly. Thank you for uh, tuning in at the moment and stay with me. All right, hey, uh, so I finally made progress with my little Death Star here, and now the final pieces are to lay in, to lay in uh, all of these uh, interior details. And uh, so I'm gonna put those in, snap those in, and then go give it another coat of primer and then give it some final paint. Uh, my wiring's in and done. And uh, so right now, it, this is actually uh, quite a challenge to figure out which of these parts go in which line here. Um, so A1, part number two has already been done apparently. So A1 number 5 is right there, and A1 number 5 is right here, and I will say this, these gates are precise, but they're, they're large, so it sometimes makes me feel like they're part of the part, of the part, part of the, yeah, part of the part that I'm snipping off there. So, that looks like it goes... That A1 number 5 goes along the outside with the circle down. Looks like me. See, that's why I was thinking that this is so challenging that I don't even know where to begin on some of these. Maybe there? Maybe number five, maybe. That goes along here. Hey, look at that. Got it. 
Okay, so there's a one number five and a one number six goes somewhere else. Let's see here. A two, ten, and fourteen. Let's go there. Okay, so uh, A one. See, this is what's confusing me. This is A one number five that I just put in, and that piece there, I have no idea which number that is. So I've got to see if I can find that on one of these parts. See if any of it makes sense. So let me move on to the next one. Maybe I can, by process of elimination, come up to it. So A1 number 5 is here. And it looks like there's a A1 number 2. There's an A1 number 2 right there. And A1 number 2 fits just behind that one. So that went in. Okay, cool. All right, so let me work some more on that, and I'll be back with you. All right, so the uh, tanks have been uh, coated with clear coat. Uh, what I used was the uh, semi-gloss clear, semi-gloss clear lacquer from Model Master and it sprays on nice and it just really adds much more realism to it. And now I'm going to see if I can't add a little bit of dirt here and there. Oh yeah, with my Tamiya grays. Uh, this is uh, weathering, this is gunmetal silver orange rust so um, using their little applicator here oh look at that dirtying it right up and uh, quite nicely I might add I like the way that that looks I wasn't sure how I was going to do this but um, you know, definitely the treads here are going to be packed with dirt and grime, if you will. Just to try to bring out some of the panel lines. Now I'm going to try silver here on... Oh, look at that. Just on the top of that, and that dirt a little bit. Boy, I like that. And then let's use a little bit of this rust here. And just like that, and I am not a weathering guy by a long shot, but uh, just like that, we've changed up the look of that tank very quickly, especially with the silver on top of it. So you can see the difference between the two. Uh, just by adding some weathering there, and I, I'm not good at weathering. I don't know how to do it well, but I'm watching um, the interstellar, interstellar modeler. That guy is Augie, I think his name is, is absolutely uh, a genius when it comes to weathering stuff with uh, pastels, etc. So that's what, I'm not going to overdo that. That's one. So I'm going to go back to the gun metal here. 
darken all of that up again. Get both sides here, hopefully. And again, uh, in the movie, movie of uh, Rogue One, uh, this tank had actually been on uh, the Jedi home world there, the Jedi temple world, I'm not sure what the name of it is, uh, for quite some time. So definitely you had uh, some factors with how long uh, the weathering of that desert style uh, home world could stay in, in place. And then uh, let's go to the silver here. see again how quickly it brings up just some of the highlights and details decal details especially in that uh, piece there and then we'll come back to the rust over the gunmetal I'm trying to keep it on the lower section there so it looks more like dirt if you will And there you go. So those are the two uh, pieces there. Now for the weathering here, uh, definitely around the engines. And I'm going to try to keep more on top than necessarily on the bottom. there and we'll put some rust here on the back and then back to the now, obviously I've got that much dirtier on the one side. There we go. Bring that back up. And look how quickly the silver brings out the detail in the guns. Uh, and we'll go back to the gun metal here in the back. And across the landing gear, I'm going to move to rust. Across the landing gear, uh, instead of uh, gun metal, that way we can get some grays there. silver along this set of ridges there and I think we just need to do some on the leading edge maybe some silver on the leading edge there and some more silver on the leading edge here look how nice I brought out that detail there um, so across the wings. I'm going to use silver on the bottom because they shouldn't be as heavily weathered as on the top. And forgetting the edges. And there you go. Now, I'm not going to weather this very heavily. I'm just going to use my gun metal here on the bottom. 
Someone said that uh, with all those stormtroopers on the base with not a lot to do, they would have uh, definitely spent much more time cleaning and keeping their equipment in pristine order as opposed to a set of rebels. And uh, well, I like the way that that's giving a silver sheen to I like that. And we'll do the top side. I'm going to do the top side in gun metal because I think that that would have seen a little more usage in space. And as it sits in the rain or sits in it, it would have seen usage there. And this applicator works real nice. It just kind of conforms to the different areas. Nice. And then maybe just a hint of rust back here back and just like that all right well that is all the weathering I'm going to do on those Get my face out of the screen there so uh, oh 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 I'm sorry I missed an engine here so let's go ahead and Last engine done right there. Some gun metal. Push across the top. Maybe again just a little more rust back here. In that section. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have uh, just quickly weathered our tanks and weathered our TIE Striker and our U-Wing Fighter. And uh, boy, I tell you, I, that looks so much more realistic than what was there before. I didn't do hardly any paint, maybe a little, I did paint these and painted some in there, but for the most part that was, uh, was in the works already as far as I didn't paint the rest of that grays and just left it. And I didn't paint any on the on the U-Wing. So for just a little pieces there, that's uh, that's a lot of fun. So I'm kind of excited, weathered up. Uh, that just turned out really nice very quickly, and uh, we'll put that project aside for part of the. Um, we'll put that project aside for the uh, Rogue One uh, display, and I'm just going to use the standard display for that. The next project I'm working on, of course, is the. Um, Super Star Destroyer, and I've got this uh, primed. After the first coat of priming, I realized I needed to put a little putty on some of those pieces. And uh, you can see my wiring there for the engines, and those have been blacked pretty nicely and uh, ready to uh, to, to do um, some sanding. And then uh, we'll go to the, to the light gray paint on that. And hopefully that should pre-shade all of this black in here that I want to have stay much darker than the outside. And uh, we'll come to that little sanding on that and that should bring that color up and uh, we're off and running there. The uh, next piece of that uh, Rogue One is the, of course the uh, TIE Striker and I introduced this. TIE Striker in uh, 172nd scale plastic model kit and essentially what this is is uh, uh, the, the TIE Strikers that come out to fight the, the U-Wing fighters and the, the mishmash of fighters that they take uh, onto the uh, Rebel uh, data storage space. Or, I'm sorry, the Imperial data storage space. So, <clears throat> the cockpit is pretty um, pretty interesting here. Clear and different frame canopies and, and we'll, I'm going to try to light up a little bit in the cockpit. I'm going to do uh, left and right. Um, I'm going to do a left and right 
on the uh, um, navigation lights. So I'm going to put two little red lights up here for the engines and then two little red lights up here for that. So uh, this is going to be an interesting challenge. I've not done that before as far as that, that tiny of a space. And uh, I think I can do that with a couple of little SMDs. Just depends on the wiring runs. Uh, so I will come back to you after that. So the next step there, uh, I just started kind of putting some of this stuff together. Uh, just test fit, of course, but essentially what uh, this is going to have happen is it's going to uh, need to be uh, primered and uh, painted. And then there's a bunch of decals that go inside of the cockpit there that should look pretty nice. And I think what I'll do is just put maybe a light uh, inside or light or two inside that'll just light that cockpit up and light up the um, the the decals and then run that power back through here and, and then down the power I think comes all the way down out here uh, or not the power the, the the support for it so I, I haven't even figured it out but the first, next step is to um, primer all of this and then once it's primered then we can begin to um, uh, do the, the wiring and get that done uh, and then paint the interiors install that and then uh, work from there so for right now uh, this is going to be the end of this first update on the uh, Rogue One series uh, along with the Super Star Destroyer and I will be back to you in update number two which will probably also include more work on the uh, which will include more week work on the uh, uh, all right, hey, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in to the uh, Sloppy Model here in update number one on the uh, Rogue One uh, Star Wars set. Also uh, working on the uh, Super Star Destroyer and working on the uh, joint, uh, not the joint, the stri TIE Striker, which is going to be a larger scale, 170 second scale. I've got most of the uh, Rogue One kit done. I uh, actually finished that up, and you'll see some more of that in the reveal. And uh, working now on the Super Star Destroyer to bring that finish in. And then uh, really just getting started on the uh, TIE Striker, but uh, that should go pretty quick because it's a lot larger than uh, the models we've been working on. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I appreciate your viewership. I'm uh, very excited to be able to uh, bring uh, uh, this video to you in 2020. We're off to a good start, and uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you more here on the channel. Got uh, a bunch of exciting builds that we're going to do in 2020, and uh, looking forward to, uh, to your viewership. And again, you could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else but watching this channel. I appreciate that, and I appreciate your patronage. So until then, we'll see you again in update uh, number two. Thank you.